Welcome everybody, Scott Cooks. Is sous vide for meat only? No, it isn't. Let's sous vide some vegetables. Stay tuned. Today in our Ninja Foodie One Lid, we're gonna sous vide these vegetables. Now we've got a variety of vegetables here. It's gonna take a couple different techniques. We've got yellow crookneck squash, a yellow onion, a red pepper. You may not recognize this, but this is one of my favorite root vegetables. This is called a parsnip. These are so good. I've got some little red potatoes here. And I've got some baby carrots that have already been peeled and ready to eat. Well, we're going to sous vide all of this in our Ninja Foodie, but here's the catch. We have to do it in two different phases or two different steps because root vegetables take a higher temperature and are going to cook longer than say this yellow squash, which is gonna take a slightly lower temperature and cook a whole lot less, like 15 minutes <laughs> versus three hours. If you buy your parsnips like I do, these are pretty much right out of the ground. So you are gonna have to peel them. That's the color we're looking for. That nice bright white underneath. You don't wanna eat any of this. It's very sour and uh, it just, has a terrible texture. <laughs> it doesn't taste good. That's that's the uh, that's the good stuff right there. So let's go ahead and get all these peeled up, and then we'll cut them into oh about half inch chunks, and get them ready for the sous vide. Once you got your parsnips or your whole carrots or whatever you're doing, whatever your root vegetables you guys are working with, uh, go ahead and let's get them peeled, and then we're gonna cut them up. Let's get these bad ends off, and you cut these up any size you like. I'm going to try for bite-sized pieces right now, so I don't have to mess with them later. And as I go down the parsnips, they get pretty big, so I'll uh, half or quarter these. Probably quarter them. Looking for bite-sized pieces, and they'll also cook a little quicker too for us. We got all our veggies in here, our root vegetables in here, ready to go. And what we got to do now is go get ourselves a one gallon Ziploc baggie. Now, one of the secrets to getting a good sous vide to work is to get the air out of this bag. And when we get over to the foodie, I'm going to show you exactly how to get the air out of this bag. But for now, just give it a, about halfway across. Leave this end open, opened up for right now. Okay, well, let's get some seasoning in there first. I think you already know what I'm grabbing. So we're gonna put a little of this in here, give it a good, we'll seal it all the way, give it a good shake, and then I'll leave part, part of the bag unsealed. You'll see why in a second. So for right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave all the air I can in there for mixing. All right, good shake. Put a little flavor on it. And I'm just gonna pop one of the ends open like so, and let's get to the foodie and I'll show you why I did that. So I used the water, and by the way, I put about three cups of water into the pot. Uh, depends on how much uh, stuff you got in your bag. You just need enough for it to float around in there. So what I'm gonna do is use the water pressure to push the air out of the bag. I'm gonna try to demonstrate, but I'll tell you what I'm doing. So I'm pushing the bag into the water the pressure of the water is forcing the air, as the water rises, it forces the air out of the bag until there is little or no air left. And then you just simply zip off the end and let's make sure we got a good tight seal all the way across. We don't want any water leaking in there. And you're probably saying, oh, I see everybody using vacuum sealers and stuff like that. Well, yeah, you can do that. But a good old fashioned, everyday, freezer style Ziploc baggie is all you need for, uh, I'd say probably anything under eight hours. If you're going over eight hours sous vide, for some reason, uh, I would just simply double bag it. That's all you gotta do, put two bags on it. That's all. Anyway, we're floating, we're in there good. We'll probably, uh, we're gonna do this for three hours, so we'll probably come back in about an hour and a half and just roll it over. 
and that's it. Let's get it going. Okay, this is the smart lid with the, uh, the slider here. So depending on where you're at, of course, that's for pressure. That's for steam and crisp. We're going to sous vide, so we're going to go all the way over. Just turn your knob until we hit sous vide right there. Okay. Set our temperature. Now, these are root vegetables, not meat. Meat is different. We're going to 183. Okay. 185, apparently. You know what? I think I'd rather go to the lower side. Let's go to 180. Three hours is already set, and uh, we're ready to go, guys. And that's it. We're going to do a preheat. It'll probably preheat for about 10 minutes as that water gets hot. And then it's just going to get up to temperature 180 and just hold it. It'll hold it perfectly 180 for three hours. In an hour and a half, we'll come flip those veggies over. And for the rest of the vegetables on the counter there, the squash, the pepper, we'll get those cut up in a couple hours, put those in a different baggie, and uh, we'll drop, uh, when we pull these out, we'll drop those in. Okay, three hours is up. Let's take a peek and see what we're doing here. We did a little flip earlier. And, uh, oh, she is hot. 183 is hot, guys. We're 180 on this one. So, yeah, these veggies are good. I can I can just see. And what I'm going to do is try to just try to press on one. Yeah, they feel good. Okay, so we're going to take these out. And the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to let the, set this over in a bowl somewhere because it's wet. Uh, the water is still good and hot. So we're going to uh, take the rest of the vegetables um, and bag those up and get those in and um, do those for, I don't know, about 15 to 20 minutes. Every vegetable is different. Um, so, you know, it's, I don't want to give you guys an exact time because you'll say, oh, Scott, you told me 10 minutes and it was too tough, you know. Judge things for yourself. Everything I try to teach you on these foodies is just general information. That's the beautiful thing about these foodies. You can just change things, do things different. But it's all just to give you the idea. Anyway, does that look good or what? Oh, my gosh. Man, we're going to put a little more of that uh, Himalayan pink salt on there. We're going to go ahead and do the non-root vegetables. We're going to do our pepper, squash, and onion. And uh, we're going to put those in at 180 for... Uh, because of the onion, I'm probably going to go for about 30 minutes. Uh, the rest of this probably take 15 minutes, but I think the onion is going to take a little longer. So we'll go 30, maybe 40 minutes. Um, we'll see how it's going. We'll check it. Just reach in there and squeeze it and see how it's going. Let's cut this up real quick. some of that same Himalayan pink salt and pepper in there. Get it into the baggie and get it into the foodie. Once cooked, we'll combine this with our other vegetables that we already did and our sous vide is done. All right, if your foodie shut down on you, go ahead and restart it. Remember, we still have some water in here from our previous route. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to pull that seal, except for about that much. We're going to just keep, let me get my hand over here. We're just going to keep pressing down into the water. Fold the bag over. Don't let any of the water get in. Just remember what side you got open, which for me is right here. Just keep pressing and pressing and pressing until you get most of the air out. And that's all you guys need to do. You don't need a um, vacuum sealer um, to just do a quick sous vide like that. Okay, that's it. Lid down. And we're going to put it right back where we had it before, guys. Flip your foodie over to sous vide. Set your temperature. We're going back to 180. I know it's super high, but remember we're doing vegetables, not, uh, not meat right now. 180, uh, three hours, not necessary. I'm going to put it on um, one hour, even though I don't think I'm going to do one hour. I think I'm going to do about 30 or 40 minutes. And we'll go from there. We'll see you back in a few minutes. Well, there we go. We've got our root vegetables, three hours at 180. And we've got our other vegetables, 
uh, I went ahead and did them for 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes, uh, also at 180. And the real test is the tenderness, and pretty much the hardest thing we have here will be the parsnip. So we're going to go right for a parsnip. And we're also going to taste test this on camera for you. So let's go ahead and, this is pretty hot, but let's go ahead and get a closer look here and see what's happening. You can see the, that that is definitely cooked through, is tender. The potatoes are also obviously pretty hard. And I'm just going right through those as well. So the root vegetables are cooked perfectly. Let's look into some of this other food over here. Onion. Always worried about the onion. It takes a little longer to cook an onion. So let's see where we're at with that. It's soft. Translucent. I'd say that's cooked very well. And the squash. Well, I'm just going right through it with the fork. So, And we might as well check the red pepper. Yes, definitely cook. Let's give all this a taste test real quick. Now, for the taste test, this is all I'm going to do. When we serve this for dinner, uh, we will go ahead and um, melt some real butter over the top of it as well. well. Okay, I'm going to start off with the biggest chunk of parsnip I could find in the on the plate. Let's just go for this. Oh, that is so good. That is so good, guys. Mmm. I'd say that was perfectly cooked. Let's go for a piece of squash. And then we'll try a potato. Mmm, same thing. I'm really working on that, that outside. Remember, I did not peel the squash. Tender, but yet has a little bit of bite to it, a little bit of crisp. That's how I like it. And finally, the potato. That's perfect. Anyway, so I guess that answers the question. Can you sous vide vegetables? Well, heck yeah, you can. And uh, they are fantastic. Uh, you can take it to the next level once they're sous vide, just like any uh, meat. You could go right ahead next and uh, throw the air fryer on it, give it a little, a little char, a little roast. I'm not going to do that. But uh, there's all kinds of things you can do with these now that they're, they're, they're cooked. They're ready to eat. But you can... Uh, do other things with them and that's it um we'll see you guys real soon on the next video don't forget to hit that like button for me subscribe to the channel see you soon